My name is Brent Ramsey, Technical Advisor for Canon USA. And in this video, I'd like to take you through the menu system of Canon's first model in the multi-purpose camera line, the ME20 FSH. All right, so let's look at these menus. The ME20 FSH is actually very simple to use with a very small and efficient menu system. And there's only four setting groups. You've got camera setup, you've got custom picture, you have audio video setup and other functions. Let's first take a look at the camera setup menu. Light metering allows you to select the metering mode based upon the shooting or lighting conditions. You have standard, backlight and spotlight. AE shift, this allows you to adjust compensation for the exposure when the camera mode is set to auto or when you're using push auto iris. AE response, this determines the degree of how fast the aperture will adjust when the camera mode is set to auto or when you're using push auto iris. There's AGC limit, here you can set an automatic gain control limit to control just how high the top limit of gain will be when the camera is set in the auto mode. The default is set to 75 dB, but you can tell it to max out at a number of lesser settings that would help to minimize noise at the higher limits. Flicker reduction sets the camera to automatically adjust for flicker caused by artificial lighting. Shockless white balance. When this setting's on, the transition between white balance adjustments is minimized. Zoom iris correction. If this setting is on and you're using a compatible lens, the camera will adjust for a change in exposure value as you zoom through the lens range. Focus limit. Now what this does is it limits the movement range of focusing on the lens. The near and far ends of the focus can be set to limit lens movement to the range between those settings. Teleconverter offers times two and times four digital zoom of the focal length of the attached lens. EFS lens, when this setting is on, it reduces the fall off or the vignetting in the peripheral edges of the image. Auto black balance, this initiates the procedure to automatically black balance the camera. And you would do this when you uh, first start up the camera in the morning, or if the temperature changes drastically during the day, or say you're just changing ISO settings all day long. Color bars, this would be for sending out to an external monitor and making calibration there. You've got SMPTE and Arab. Infrared on or off, this activates or deactivates the IR filters. ND mode determines how the ND filter level is adjusted when the camera mode is set to auto. Peripheral illumination correction. This adjusts for the fall off or vignetting of a compatible lens. All right, so let's go into the uh, custom picture settings now. Now, those of you familiar with the Cinema EO settings will recognize these options immediately. Canon Log, YDR, EO Standard, there's Normal 1, Normal 2, Normal 3, Normal 4, or say getting a broadcast ready output using the normal 1 through 4 settings. All of the gamma settings offer some degree of fine tuning as well. All right, let's look at the audio video setup. Mic power on or off. This supplies phantom power to an attached mic. The camera has pretty modest sound capturing tools and requires an external mic to be attached for outputting audio. One kilohertz tone, this sends one kilohertz tone to an external recorder to set your levels. 3G SDI mapping offers the selections of a level A and level B, which is in compliance with SMPTE ST425-1. Data and signals can be output through either of the camera's 3G HDSDI terminals. Rec command. This camera requires an external recorder to be able to record video. This is where you can trigger the external recorder to roll on a command from an external device, like the RCV100. All right, so let's look at other functions. There's reset. You can change the time zone you're working in. You can set the clock or the way the clock is displayed. Assignable buttons, you can assign functions from the menu to an external button. And there's three of them on this camera. And you could have a fourth on the RCV100. You could basically put functions like one shot AF, push auto iris, auto black balance, AE shift plus, AE shift minus, color bars, you can set the white balance, teleconverter, infrared, remote, external recorder, custom picture, and camera mode, auto, or manual. You can assign any of those functions to an external button. You can turn the power LED on or off. You can adjust the fan speed to be on automatically, or you can put it on high, middle, or low. 
You have two choices of system frequency depending on what part of the world you're working in. There's 5994 hertz and 50 hertz. Here's where you choose your frame rates. You have 5994P, 5994I, 2997P, 2398. There's two resolution choices, 1920, 1080, or 128720. There's Genlock adjustment, which would sync this device with other devices or other cameras, and you would use it in live events or multi-camera situations. Scan reverse is used to select the video scanning system. This could be used if you're mounting the camera upside down, for instance. And then there's custom display. And with custom display, you can turn on or off the images that are displayed on an external monitor, the information from the camera that tells you the settings. You can give the camera a name, up to 16 characters. You can reset the hour meter and initialize the media. The ME20 FSH doesn't have any internal recording options, but it does have a slot for a micro SD card. And that is where you would update the firmware for the camera. Okay, that's it. The menu system for the ME20 FSH. I'm Brent Ramsey for Canon USA. Thanks for watching.